at the conference there was palpable optimism that the United States have elected Obama to be the next president. From a global health perspective and health inequity perspective, what message would you like to send out to him? I would say two things. I mean, firstly, let before I say two things, uh, firstly, let me just say that the news of his uh, election sent a very positive note through the conference. Um, as Jonathan Parrott said, uh, it's welcoming the U.S. back to the family of nations. Now, all right, that's, that's a nice punchline, <laughs> but I mean, in a way, that's what it felt like. And, and the reason people were so excited was an African-American got elected president of the United States of America, that a direct line from Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement t to the president. And also, the reason it was so important for the commissioners is we said clearly in our report that major advances come from collective action. And the civil rights movement is one of those examples. It wasn't one individual, it was a civil rights movement. And that civil rights movement finally has led to an African-American being elected president of the United States. Now, he's a pretty special person. I mean, he's, you know, Harvard-educated and goodness knows what. So he's a pretty special individual. And I don't think he got elected because he was an African-American. He got elected because he's obviously a very special individual, I mean, a remarkable individual. But being an African-American wasn't a barrier to being elected. And that's what was so special and sent such a note of optimism. And the second part, just coming back to this phrase that I wouldn't have used, but welcoming the U.S. back into the family of nations, the U.S. can be such a powerful force for good, and they haven't been in the last eight years. The reason, they, they say, why do people hate us? Well, we don't need to go through it, you know, waterboarding and extraordinary renditions and Abu Ghraib and the invasion of Iraq and Guantanamo Bay. and this free market ideology that says the public sector is bad, um, hollow out the public sector, is very bad, everything's got to be private, and we don't care whether the levees in New Orleans break down or the bridges collapse because they're all public and public is bad. So there was a whole ideology of a bad way of doing things that clearly wasn't good. What President-elect Obama represents is an opportunity to rethink that. Now, there's huge expectation on him, enormous expect expectation. He's supposed to, in some master stroke, solve the world's financial problems, bring America back to having confidence in itself, solve the problem of health equity within America, solve the problems of global equity, solve global warming. By golly, I mean, you know... He's, you know, he's a human being. <laughs> he's a human being. Um, and so there's these huge expectations on him. But nevertheless, the messages he's conveyed is that he's concerned about these things. And that's very important. That's encouraging. So to come now to the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, one clear message from the Commission is it's very important to have an equitable healthcare system, but that's not enough. I don't believe for one minute that the 17 year difference in life expectancy between Washington DC and the suburbs of Washington in affluent Maryland would be solved by having fair access to the healthcare system. I don't believe for one minute that that 17 year gap in life expectancy is due to differentials in healthcare. In Glasgow, we've got primary healthcare free at the point of use and we've got a 28 year difference. Nobody believes it's because the people in the poor area of Glasgow, Carlton, can't get to see their GP. They may find it more difficult to get to see their GP, but that's not why their life expectancy is 28 years shorter. So. For President Obama to say, yes, it's a high priority for me to fix the healthcare system is, of course, great for Americans, but he shouldn't imagine that that will fix the health equity problem by itself because there's a huge amount to do, and it's all the things we covered in the report.
So there's a great deal that he can do to try and fix America's gross problems of health inequity. But then the US is potentially a most important force for good in the world on global warming, on the whole issue of the world, the global economic order. We've been discussing about aid. The US is one of the lowest of the rich countries in the percent of gross national income it gives to overseas development assistance. Debt. The US banks and, and other parts um, are huge recipients of those debt repayments. The global financial institutions, the US has a huge influence on the World Bank. So it can play a very big role in actually just changing the framework of understanding and actually trying to take, I'm not saying that he should take the Commission's report as his Bible, but the sort of spirit of understanding that was encapsulated in the Commission's report one would hope will be the approach that he brings to a new administration.